What's up guys and welcome back to Cash Coach Sports. It's been a while, a bit of a, a break, but we're back as always. We like to have these little breaks with me as always. Bjorn, Bjorn, my brother, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks my brother. How are you? No, all good, all good, brother. How's, uh, how's your break been? <laughs> from recording? It's been relaxing. We could call it a mini holiday, I guess. Yeah. But it's been yeah, yeah. Qu- it's been quite relaxing. Yeah, you know, work, you know, work struggles and stuff comes up in life, and some things come up in life, so you get a bit busy. But I'm happy yeah. to be back. Um, it's fun always doing these little videos with you, and I know our our supporters, our subscribers enjoy them as well. So happy to be back, to say the least. Yeah, but on our subscribers, if you guys can. Share this, uh, leave a like, Please, subscribe, more, and maybe we can change our day jobs into this and we can give you guys yeah. more videos. <laughs> if we can actually yeah. make some fucking money out of this, then we can definitely <laughs> do a lot more videos for you guys. <laughs> exactly. But bro, obviously a lot of rugby, a lot of football, a lot of things happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, a little list we made quite a while back, not a while back, about a week back, is our underrated 15 of Springboks. Uh-huh. So so it's obviously how it's going to work. Uh, we'll just like we always do, you give me your front row, I'll give you my front row. But the crack- the criteria of this is just guys who, let's say, don't get the 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 the, the rap that they they should be the getting for their performance. Yeah, the recognition yeah. that they deserve, I'd say. And I mean, exactly. South African, the talent pool we have in this country is huge. There's always there's always these fringe players, the players that end up missing out on Springboks, actually never even getting a Springbok cap. But I think they deserve the recognition. They've been putting in some very good performance, especially in the URC this season. So I think yeah. they deserve their recognition. Exactly, it's also a lot of the style of play, what do we call here, this side of the, 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 the black rugby, bro, the stuff that you don't yeah. see, but ends up winning games, you know. But let's get straight into it, bro, give me your underrated XP front row. Okay, so for the props, I've got the big, big boy up front, I've got Asanati and Tlavakanya from the Lions. Yeah, I think yeah. he's been putting in a big, big shift this year, and I mean, he could be like the new France Malheur coming through. The, the guys with yeah. a, little bit of, a little bit of extra meat on their bones. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of Asanati playing for the Lions. Unfortunately, you know, I just think in general the Lions players don't get the same recognition as the other ones do. If he if he probably played for the Bulls or the Stormers, he probably would have been in the the Springbok team by now. But yeah, I'm yeah. a big fan of Asanati and Tlavakani. I think he's come through the ranks quite nicely, and he's one of those guys that just keeps performing at a high level. Um, I know he makes a few big big hits as well, and I wouldn't really want to be in the, yeah. the scrub going up against them. So I've got Asanati and Tlavakani from the Lions one, three. I've got Mornay Smith. Another one, I think, another guy, I think that just falls away a little bit because of how many good players there are, especially at the Bulls in the the, uh, the front row position. We've seen so many solid Bulls front rowers come through the years, like Gatro Stian Camps. I mean, that's just the name of yeah. Richard Bands is an old, old one, but yeah, the, the Bulls always have had good, 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 good forwards. Mm-hmm. And then for Hooker, it was a bit difficult because. I don't want to go with the, the generic Johan Grobelaars, Johan Jan Hendrik Vessels, you know, those guys that probably are going to end up playing for the box. Yeah. I went for a, a little bit of a wild card pick here with Kieran van Feeren from the Sharks. I think he's van been one of those Fieren. solid... Yeah. yeah. I think he's been quite a solid, solid player over the years. I know there's the likes of PJ Boerta as well coming through with the Lions. I just think Kieran van Feeren has been a very, very solid player throughout the years. And who's your um, front three, brother? I, I like this one because I think now we can do like a, a, a Beyond vs Dean XV bro because yeah. I got a completely different front row bro. Yeah, I there's do, so many I players do. guys, yeah. honestly there's so many players out there that, that, that like are deserving of getting into these sides. So yeah, let's hear yours. Exactly. At one I've got Steve Sotole. I think oh, bro, he's also mm-hmm. one of those that flies under the radar. But he does the work everywhere bro. He seems to start a lot for both teams, Lions and Stormers. Yeah. Now. And he gets his, his stats up bro. Like, like you don't really see, notice him in terms of like He's making a lot of mistakes and you wouldn't say like, oh, that was brilliant, Steve. You know, he just, he's yeah. just like this in the black book. He does it all, bro. So he's, I like the way he plays, bro. Steve at one. Two, I went with okay. PJ Porter. I went with PJ Porter uh, just yeah. for uh, the form of the Lions versus the form of the Sharks, bro. I think. Very uh, technical for, as well. He's probably the, the most technical looker in the country at the moment. You know, yeah. Lion House, Crummy Jean, all of that. Exactly. So, and I mean, the Lions. One of their main weapons is the the rolling more, bro. And that that starts yeah. with the th- with the throw, bro. You know what I mean. So I'll go with PJ mm-hmm. at two, three. I went with Nietling for Shea, captain of the Stormers, bro. The Nietling. I, 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 I'm interested to see if he gets into the box team this year, bro. He, I think he is so he's actually a very very good prop, bro. And the last thing about props, they much like they hit the maturity a bit later in the career, so about 30, 30 plus, bro. So he's coming to that age. So hopefully he starts getting a. A knock in there because he's a brilliant i think he's a very good player bro so the prop is also probably the position that we're going to see a lot of changes coming through yeah you know, the springbok setup going now because i mean a lot of guys are reaching that age where they're pretty much done like Malaba's probably done now as well i mean trevor and also he's about 34 years yeah. old 
So I think we're probably going to see a, a, quite a few new um, front rowers coming into the side. So mm-hmm. I like that. I like those shots. I definitely like those shots. Not a, not a bad front row there. Yeah, for sure, bro. So give me your locks then. We move forward. Okay, so lock. I went for a guy that's actually at the Sharks at the moment, but he's moving to another Sharks team, the South Sharks. I went with LaRue Roots. Yeah, I think he's also a very underrated player. I think with his size and everything, you could have possibly been the African Paul Villemus, if I could say, even though he's yeah. African himself. But Larurus with his size and everything, I think he's another one definitely that should probably be in the box team. He can offer something different to what our locks actually mm-hmm. have at the moment. And then I went with Ruben van Heeren from the Stormers. I know you're a big, big fan of him. Yeah. And to be yeah. honest, he's been, putting in, yeah, he's been putting in a lot of big shifts this year. Um, one guy though that I think just just misses out just because I don't see enough of him playing. I'm not even sure how how he is doing in France, but it's JJ van der Mesh. He was one yeah. that I thought could have got into the side, but you know he's been so quiet. Like he broke through the scene like as a youngster. He was the next up and coming Ibn Etzebet, gonna take over the the reins in the Springbok team. But uh, since he's moved to France, he's, it's been it's been quiet on his front. Like I haven't heard much from him. No, oh, bro, I don't think he's actually been performing that great, bro. If if he's if like, you think of it like like. Um, start from say they mm. you hear about these guys performing well, bro. You know, so yeah, you it must be it. a fact that of his like he's not playing it well. But anyway, at mm. four, I also went with Larry Roots. Yeah. I'm also like like what he said, a monster, bro. And uh, he, the path he's taken, like com- coming from the Pumas to playing super uh, well, you are seeing now. Mm. If he goes on to box, bro, that's uh, I like I like guys who do that Fuff style, you know, like he's added it's, victory, it's, yeah. it's like it's like shift, hard bro. work, bro. It's guys who put yeah. in the shift, yeah. At five, bro, I moved on to the cheaters, Victor Sekakete, captain of the cheaters, obviously playing. Mm-hmm. I think at Ospreys now, get it? He's on a loan mm-hmm. deal at Ospreys. But I like the way he plays, bro. He was at the Lions a few years ago. I was going to say, well. didn't you guys, when you were down at UJ, didn't you guys spend a few years together? Yeah, yeah, he was at the Lions, bro. Yeah. So I, I, he's Cheetah's captain, bro, and Cheetah's play good rugby, bro. We can say what we want, like they might be like ours. Yeah, I in rugby, yo. Yeah. Exactly, bro, and they beat some big teams. So I went to the second gear to add five, bro. What about, what about one guy I think we both missed? Uh, Stassen, Andre Stassen. You don't think there's maybe an opportunity for him? Because he was actually one of the, my third choice going into the, the setup. Underrated, I don't think he's underrated, bro. I think he's got I think he's quite good. highly rated. Yeah, I think he's from school. Maybe even a bit overrated, rated. would you say? I mean, he does the shifts, bro, but I don't think he's underrated. I wouldn't say particularly overrated, but he's not underrated. He gets, yeah. the, he gets the recognition he wants. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, brother, loose forwards. So give me your loose forwards there. Okay, loose forwards. I went with two former Lions players. Actually, I went with James Spencer from the Sharks. Uh, yeah. Another one, a, a, the mold of Yaku Krills. I really, I really like James Spencer. I think he carries the ball very well. Obviously, good at the... Um, the malls and clearing the racks and all of that. One guy almost got sorry before I move on to my next flank um, was Chris Kluter. I think yeah. he was also very very solid. Maybe he was also a bit overrated at one stage when he was playing in South Africa with the Stormers. But he was another one that I thought could possibly get into the side. I, I mean, I really enjoy the way Chris Kluter plays, but he's actually not in my team. So I got James Fence and I got Carl Brink from the Bulls. I think Brinky mm-hmm. offers a lot. He puts in the big hits. And he was another one that was, he, did, he made it actually into the box setup a few years ago and then unfortunately for injuries and stuff, curtailed his mm. career a little bit. But I like Carl Brink and then another one from the Bulls in 8 is Mpile Gumedi. I like him, I know he was, uh, I actually saw him during his years when I worked for at the Craven Week in 2018. Another solid, solid player. I see he recently renewed his contract with the Bulls and I think he's going to be one of those players that really comes through and shines. For sure, for sure. I, I, I would just, I would disagree that he's got the under te- underrated tag on him. Like, I think like. Is it? You think so? Yeah, I, I look at it from like a media standpoint. You know, like they're always talking about him. He's always in the news. You know that type of thing. My, my, just my reasoning with it is, if you look at the other guys, like he's always behind Evan Ruiz, he's behind Pepsi Butelezi, he's behind Frank. But didn't Yorn. he like only come onto the scene like recently though? He was at the Sharks for a while. He just didn't get the breakthrough uh, there. I'm not sure why. I think okay, he was. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That changes. Yeah, mind, yeah. He, he was. He was at. He was actually at the Sharks for a while. He was playing behind yeah. Pepsi Butelezi. That's actually just why I was thinking he's actually quite a bit underrated. Because if you look at his trajectory over the last year compared to Pepsi's, I think he's definitely shot up a lot. And maybe under the tutelage of Jake White, he's picked up quite a bit of nuance in the game. He's understanding the game a little bit better. And I don't know. I just like him. I like his character as well. Okay, I can agree with that, bro. I like the way he plays as well, bro. 
But for Where did you have? I went with uh, Gideon van der Merwe from the Cheetahs, bro. I also think the mm-hmm. same like role as uh, James Fenton, not the biggest, but kind of in that fetcher. Uh, yeah. Like Arnie Brusso, era player. Yeah, yeah, speedy. He's a good sevens player as well, bro. So I liked him. He was also with me at the puck, so maybe I'm a bit biased to him. Like, he's, just, <laughs> he's work rate, bro. You know, he's one of yeah. those guys that always has an 8 out of 10 game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's... I like guys. You know, like, it never drops up a bad performance, really. Exactly, exactly. At seven, I went to Willy Engelberg, bro. I think he puts in a massive shift, bro. Obviously, like, Storm was there, flashy, flashy, uh, loose forwards. So he pretty much, like, gets forgotten in a way, bro. You always think mm. of the Hajivas and even Ruas, but they never really think of, like, Willy Engelberg and the work he actually puts in. He's probably the most consistent of them, if you think yeah. about, like, no, that's statistics a good wise. Okay, see. And at eight, I got Frankie Horn, bro. I think he's a big, big talent. Bro. He's just one, also yeah. an all-around like, rugby player. Does everything, and he definitely. Doesn't you know, get I'm the, the biggest the, Frankie Horn fan as well. I'm the biggest Frankie you are, Horn fan. You are. You're probably the only guy who gives him the, the recognition he deserves. Bro. <laughs> if, it was, if it was up to me, he would have been in the Springbok team about two or three years ago. <laughs> exactly, bro. So exactly that. Bro. So he's uh, underrated. For, he he's probably the, the the one guy in the team that embodies that uh, underrated. Springbok mm. potential, bro. So I went with him at eight, yeah. No, no, not a bad, not a bad. I think those are pretty two good forward packs today from us. I think there's obviously guys. There's probably gonna be some of us, some plays that we've missed out on that you guys are gonna let us know down in the comments. But please don't forget to share, share your teams and let us know. But let's yeah. move on to the back line. Yes, you want to start with the backs for us? Yeah, you start with the let backs. Nine and ten, half backs. backs. Nine and ten, nine and ten, nine. I went Paul Devet, bro. Okay, uh, one, one of those, one of those guys who just. Uh, Bro, there's too many scrum offs, too many good scrum offs, and yeah, wait, but he does know. he does the work, but he scores a lot of tries. He does uh, has good uh, uh, box kicks, everything good, bro. It's just there's other guys who just mm. do everything a little bit a little better or have like an X factor over him, you know. But Paul mm-hmm. Levet, I got him at nine and ten. Chris Smith, bro, uh, bro, clean fly half morning stain mold, just doesn't get the minutes, bro. I think unfortunately playing behind you on Chris and yeah. Yeah, I think Bulls just maybe the wrong team. I think he, you know what he could benefit a lot from is making a move like Tinas the Beer made. Tinas the Beer is also another mm-hmm. flyer we could probably put in this team, bro. Underrated Tinas the Beer, but make a move overseas to to Europe or something, get some more minutes, and I'm sure he he could uh, do a lot better than what he's doing now at the Bulls, you know. And Chris Smith is another one. I mean, the Lions are in desperate need of a fluff now with Jordan Hendrickson yeah. moving over over to the Sharks. So I agree with you. Actually, I've got also I've got Chris Smith at ten. Exactly the same reasons that you mentioned, bro. I think he's just a solid, solid fluff. Mm-hmm. His passing abilities is very good, and he kicks very well. And just he's also very solid on the fence. So as an all-around package, I really like Chris Smith. But I went with a different nine. Maybe not so much underrated in the terms of like the South African. Um, selectors and whatnot but i went to sanelli no humba i don't think he gets the recognition he does from the south african fans that he deserves i know he's been playing a lot of rugby this year at the 10 but he also he's just he's so clean with the ball he's got such an excellent rugby brain and i just i don't know i'm a, I'm a big fan of sanelli no humba i had my my, res, my reservations actually when he joined the line just because of how it ended at the sharks for him he was dropping so far down the line i think he was like fourth Fair enough playing behind Grant Williams and um, Jaden Hendrickson, but he was dropping down so quickly down the line after being like the next spring box scrum off. But I'm a big, big fan of the numbers. So I've got Nohamba at 9 and I've got Chris Smith at, at 10 as well. So yeah, very much the same same ideas as you there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your centers then. Give me your centers. Okay, so at the centers, I've got one from the Lions. I've got Marius Lowe at 12. Probably being the best... Um, Inside center in the URC this season, for mm-hmm. the African sides at least. He carries the ball very, very well. Obviously, also the captain of the Lions. I really like his leadership qualities. And having more leaders in the Springbok team can never hurt. Not necessarily yeah. that he's going to be starting in the side, but just getting involved in the side for now could be well could be a good thing for him. Because also, we know Damien Dalende, still a young player quite when you think of it. He's just been playing so long. But we need a little bit of more backup for him in case he gets injured. And then at 13, I went with David Creel from the Bulls. Another exciting, exciting player. I think we might see his brother also getting into my side soon. But yeah, I went with David Creel from the Bulls. I think he's just been, also been having a couple of excellent years. Probably the last two to three years, he's just been very, yeah. very good for the Bulls. Who do you go for the, at the I centers? also went with Marius Lowe, bro. I think it's, it's the uh-huh. same things you said. I agree with it as well. So, like, hardworking. 
just uh, I always think of these guys, like I said it already, 8 out of 10 performances every game. Right? Yeah. Maybe not the most amazing games, like 10 out of 10s, yeah. but just the consistency. Very reliable. He's a reliable player, yeah. It's the guys who get the wins. Those are the, 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 the players that get the wins. You know, coaches yeah. does do this, they do, they do it. At 13, I went with Ruan Nal, bro. I think that's what Ruan Nal was actually my third choice, right? He was my third choice. He was the one that was a toss up between him and David for me. Yeah, bro. I think he's also been like those periods of times when he's been unlucky to get a pop cap, bro. So he he was just unlucky that time when Um came onto the scene and Um just like exploded yeah. on the world scene, bro. I think that was just his unlucky. And I mean, he was fantastic in the sevens as well. He's, oh, bro. I like the way he plays. Always and reliable. he's another big boy, eh? He's like. You yeah. don't really notice it, but he's, he's a very, very big player and he's solid on the fence once again. He very much reminds me also of Jesse Creel. So, him slotting no. into the 13 position could be very good for the spin box. Exactly. Uh, I, th I think it's a bit late for him now, bro. I think it's a bit of that... Uh, you think the time has come and gone for him? Uh, 33, 34. So, I think... Uh, I think yeah. Focus is maybe it's... out of... Out of we'll never know. I mean, do want, look at the on three, but Saints is a different position, you know. Yeah, the speed also with age, the speed starts to go, and you know, in the back yeah, line, you do need speed. And also the potential of 13s coming around, coming mm -hmm. into the scene. Enko from Vakes there, bro, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, wings. wings there, bro. Okay, so I'm going to start with 14. I've got actually both Lions winners in, in my side this time. I've got Richard mm -hmm. Creel from the Lions as well, because he's a very versatile player. He's another one that I actually saw at the 2018 Craven Week. He's a silky runner. He's got those long, mm -hmm. weird legs like uh, Jacques Ferry used to have. Like, he just seems to trot around the field and no one seems to be able to, like, really stop him. So I went to the Richard Creel. And then having the brothers in the same team could be quite could be quite a fun experience. I mean, we've seen that before with the Duplessis and those. And then yeah. 11 is actually a guy, Edward van der Merwe. I know he's been spoken about quite a bit. But if you look at the performances of someone like Kurtley Orenza, uh, Compared to Edwell, I think Edwell is the best finisher in the country. And I do believe he's, in my opinion, he's probably a better player than Kirtley. So I would definitely have gone with Edwell. I think he does get recognition fair enough. I, I believe he's been the Lions MVP for the last two years. I just think in the broader South African sense, no one ever really seems to talk to speak about Edwell van der Merwe. And I just think he's such a good player. He's probably on, on this list for me, the best player on this list. Bro, it's actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's such a true thing I just say, bro. It's like... If he had stayed at the Stormers and consistently played at the Stormers the way he's playing, he'd be a Bok now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I so agree with you. I agree with you. It's, it's definitely the, the, the playing at the Lions puts him in that underrated uh, category. Mm. You're definitely right. I think he's definitely underrated. I actually just I went to the same wings, bro. <laughs> Richard Creel and um, Edwell. Edwell, it was a toss-up between him and Zas. But because uh, that's also a very good bro, so I don't think maybe get, Another uh, one. Uh, get uh, a lot of recognition. But also, he early on in his career, he used to make a lot of mistakes. And like, you know, it's now later on, he's been a lot better. But yeah, Edward after he made like that move to the Cheetahs, he actually revived his career very nicely after he made that move yeah. to the Cheetahs. Obviously, back at the Stormers now. And he's been yeah. another one. His finishing is really good. And he's been one of the best players for the Stormers over the last two seasons. I, I remember even with the Stormers URC victory. If if I'm not mistaken, he might have been the top scorer that season, and he's was one of definitely arguably one of their best players that year. For sure, bro. I think I think it is, bro. But I think Edwell's is a bit better than him. So, I also uh, think so, yeah. Edwell and Richard Creel at fifteen. Who Richard do you have? Creel. So I've got two options. I was undecided on this one. I think the the public should vote and maybe give me a little bit of. <laughs> Um, a little bit of help with this one. So I went with a former Lions player and a current Slayer player. I went with Tyron Green, currently at the Harlequins. Yeah. Um, we all know what Tyron Green can do, especially with ball in hand. He's such an elusive runner. Another one that's very good at defense. And a guy that's actually very, very similar to him. They got the same mold. They even look a bit alike. Is Q and Horn from the, the Lions as well. I think Horn has just rose in like his prominence over the last two, three years. Also very young still. And I just think, compared to the other fullbacks in the country, I know it's quite difficult to be compared to the likes of Warwick Halant and Vili, Vili LaRue, but they've kind of had their careers now. Whereas I think Kieran Warren is one of those guys that, once he, if he actually also, like we mentioned before, if he actually played for the Bulls or the Storm, it probably would have been in the, the South African setup already. I just yeah. think he's another solid player. He's got a very good left boot and he's a monster on the fence. He's good on attack. I don't really see a, um, a negative in his, in his gameplay. Who did you go with at 15? I also I went to Tyron Green, bro. I think uh, Tyron Green. The fact that he's not in South Africa and he's not a Springbok is like sad, bro. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, 
that that season just before he left, bro. I think he was in the setup. He was in the the poker setup. He was like pretty much like just that. about to break through into that side. Because remember, I think it was we were still in the Super Rugby back then, and he was like. He had such an excellent super rugby. It was just before, just after COVID struck, and he was really good. He was really, really yeah. good. Yeah, and I, I think and now he's killing it, bro. The tries he's mm. scoring, the things he's doing there. So he might. Be, I don't know if he's like uh, how how highly rated he is by the English public, but he, he, I wouldn't be shocked if we see that guy playing for England one of the on the wing, England especially. Next yeah. Years, bro. Yeah, yeah. So that's our teams, bro. Do you want to read out yours there, and I'll read out mine. Okay, so I've got Asanati Tlabakanya, I've got Kieran Van Feeren, Mornay Smith, that's my front row. Locks, i got LaRue Roots, Ruben Van Yeren. And uh, loose forwards, i got James Fencer, Carl Brunk, and Pula Gumeri. And then backline, i got Sanele Noamba, Chris Smith, Edel van der Merwe and Richard Creel in the wings. i got Marius Lowe and David Creel in the centers. And at 15, like I said, guys, I'm really undecided. I, I don't know who to go for. I'm, I'm actually leaning towards, because of the things Dean mentioned, I'm leaning towards Tyron Green, just because he also has a little bit more experience, but I'm undecided between Tyron Green and, and Q and Orn. But I think I'll go with Green as well, just because I think you made a few yeah. solid points on Tyron Green. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. And yours? Number one, Steve Sitole, T, PJ Boata. The three, Nietlang Fushia. Four, Leroux Le, Le Roots. Five, Victor Sekakete. Six, Gideon van der Merwe. Seven, Willy Engelbrecht. Eight, Franco Horn. Nine, Paul De Wet. Ten, Chris Smith. Eleven, Edo van der Merwe. Twelve, Marius Lowe. Thirteen, Rua Now. Fourteen, Richard Creel. And fifteen, Tyron Green. Solid yeah, teams there, Bruce. Solid really teams, solid, solid sides, teams. yeah. Guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, leave a like, please subscribe, really help us out. And comment your guys' squads, who you thought we yeah, missed out please, on. Guys. Even leave your, your entire squads, very interesting reads. I'm, I'm yes. sure there's going to be a few names we missed out. I'm sure people are going to yeah, let us sure. definitely know in the comments below. You know how they usually do as well. It happens every time, bro. But it's good. It's yeah. good. It's like you get the engagement. I like the engagement, bro. But Yeah, but we like to guys, chat to you guys. That, that's, this is the Couch Coach Sports. And until next time, cheers. Cheers, everybody.